Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Michael. I'm the developer behind Oka Software. We make game assets for Unity. If you enjoy this content, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So today I'm going to be doing a quick demo about how to use Altos. So Altos is a complete sky system. I'm just going to walk through you know, how to set it up. Um, so basically, you'll go into your Unity, click Unity Hub, open uh, a new project. You're going to want to do 3D European, name it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Altos Demo 1 because there's probably already an Altos Demo. And now we're going to wait for it to load. All right, that took forever. Basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to show how to import Altos, how to set it up, what to do. So the first thing you're going to do is open your window, go to Package Manager, um, go down to My Assets, and then you're going to look up Altos. If you want, you can search for it by hand. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and update to make sure that you're on the latest version. It'll download. Hopefully, it downloads pretty quick. And then once it downloads, we're going to show the demo scene. Nice. So it's done downloading. Now you have to import it. Right click import. You're going to wait for it to import. Awesome. Mine's just finished importing. So we're going to go to a project window. I like the one column layout better. So I'm going to switch to that. Then move it over here so that I can see it better. You're going to open the Oka software tab, Altos, Demo Resources, Levels, and the demo scene. Cool. It's pretty empty, right? Okay. So uh, first thing you're going to want to do is go to your settings, go to your renderer, click add renderer feature, Altos. All right. There you go. Altos is all set up and running. So now I'm going to do a quick walkthrough, different features of Altos, how to set it up, how to disable it completely, um, how to turn it off, how to turn it on, all that stuff. So we're going to start by uh, going to Sky Director. Basically, Altos is made up of a Sky Director, which consists of a couple of different definitions that describe how the sky looks as well as the sun and moon um, and any other sky objects. So this is a sky director, and then anything below that is a sky object. These can have um, directional lights associated with them. Um, note that in URP, obviously only one directional light can be active uh, as a shadow caster at once. So we handle that sort of for you, but um, you know, just something to keep in mind. Um, basically, we just say that the sun is the shadow caster. So, um, okay, so in the Alto Sky Director, uh, we have a sky definition, atmosphere definition, star definition, and cloud definition. We also have an Alto's data resources. This helps us to avoid including shaders uh, in your project if you're not using Alto's in that project. So ignore that, don't touch it, don't break it either, thanks. Um, so we're gonna quickly go through each one of these definitions to show you what's kind of included there. So skybox definition, sky definition, includes uh, the day and the time. In Altos, the day concept is loosely defined. Basically, we're just saying that you know a day is um, just benchmarked to the zero time, uh, and then we have a total system time, and that time progresses um, sort of based on the day-night cycle duration. This is in hours, so if you set it to one, then for each real-life hour, um, you'll have one full day-night cycle, 24 hours pass in your game. Uh, you can also configure different periods of day keyframes along with the start time, sky color, equator color, and ground color. The ground color only affects the tri-light or gradient um, lighting environment. You can add new ones or delete them. Delete them by just clicking here, and you can add new ones by just clicking there. I like to name them. You don't have to name them. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go here, da -da -da, something like that, something nice and blue. Great. So when it gets to nighttime, we'll see those colors show up. You can also configure the initial time that will um, basically like if you change the initial time when you hit play, that's the time that'll be set. And in the editor, it'll also be the time in the editor. You can change both of those from script. Um, in the description below, I'll include a link to the FAQs that gives more details about how to do that. I'm going to pop ahead, pop up here and uh, change the resolution. And um, yeah, so next thing is the atmosphere definition. This just controls the visibility. Basically how it works is we render the entire skybox colors to a texture, and then we sample that texture in order to uh, create sort of a depth fog effect, um, a visibility effect, if you will. And so this visibility uh, setting controls the sort of total visibility distance um, that you're going to want. For the star definition, you can control the, the number of stars, the whether or not it will use an automatic color and automatic brightness. The automatic color and brightness settings, um, they're set based on um, you know, real physically based uh, data that we pulled and that we looked at. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you don't have to use those. 
And you can also customize the texture, color, brightness, flicker frequency, flicker strength, size, and whether the position is static or not. I'll show you more about that in a second, as well as the inclination. So let's take a quick look at the sort of positioning and let's pop in and take a look at the sky director. So we have this really nifty editor gizmo thing that lets you kind of see different properties about the sky objects. And um, we're just gonna go here and change the initial time to nighttime so that you can see the stars. So um, you can see when I move this, the stars also rotate. Um, the stars will automatically rotate sort of as if you're at the equator and um, as if north is uh, directly along the Z positive axis. Now you can lock the stars in place by enabling the position static setting. So when you go here and then you change the initial time, you can see the stars don't move. So it's nice if you just want to have your stars always in one place. You can also adjust the inclination. Basically, this um, tilts the stars so that um, it, it's as if you're no longer directly at the equator. Um, so that'll let you kind of add some more realism into your scene if you'd like. I like keeping it at zero. I think it looks nice. But I think something that, you know, something between zero and maybe 23 looks pretty good. Um, so you can see here when we go there and then you're adjusting the sky. You can see it's slightly different, pretty similar, but slightly different. Now for the clouds, so the overall concept for the clouds is that there's a weather map, it's 2D, and it's um, across the entire cloud sort of scape. Um, we have two layers of clouds. We have the three-dimensional clouds, and then we have two-dimensional clouds. So th three-dimensional clouds are the low-altitude clouds, and then the high-up ones are the high-altitude clouds. Um, so you can kind of not really see them affecting the sky here, but if I raise up the extinction coefficient, you'll be able to see them um, getting in the way of the stars. Might be a bit easier to see them during the day. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to the daytime view and turn off the low altitude clouds. So this is just high altitude clouds. This is no clouds. This is just low altitude clouds. OK. Um, and the sort of basic configuration lets you configure how many steps we take through the clouds. This basically is, affects the quality. Um, you can control the noisiness, the render scale, whether or not you render it in scene view, whether or not temporal anti-aliasing is enabled. Um, this one's really important, the rendering mode. So if you want them to render in the background only, you can set it to background only clouds. It's a lot more performant, but you can have them render over opaque objects like these mountains here. Um, so if you do want them to be sort of in the scene and you want to be able to fly through them, make sure that rendering mode is set to clouds render over opaque objects. You can also control the ambient exposure, um, change the uh, Henny Greenstein strength, uh, eccentricity, and uh, the sun color mask. And uh, that lets you do all sorts of fun things with how you're tinting your clouds, things like that. Um, in terms of the atmosphere, this controls the planet radius. Basically, um, the cloud layer is curved towards the horizon so that you get those nice sort of layers into the clouds as we look out there. Make sure this is set to always refresh as you look out there. And um, if you raise the altitude, they'll go higher. If you bring it down, they'll come down lower. And if you change the planet radius to something like a smaller object, like the moon or um, Enceladus, you can see that the clouds curve down more quickly. So that's a really nice effect if you really want to get that. Earth is obviously based on the Earth um, uh, dimensions. You can also control the thickness of the cloud layer. If you want really tall, juicy clouds, you can do that. And you can also fade out the clouds based on distance, and you can control their visibility. So visibility here is also taken from the skybox, so they blend in perfectly with the skybox as well. Um, and then also you can choose to disable or enable cloud shadows. Uh, when cloud shadows are enabled, if you um, want to sample them yourself, you can. But I've included a uh, screen post-processing effect, which will do it for you automatically. And it'll um, kind of go ahead and sample that for you. Um, itself. You can control the resolution of the um, shadow caster and um, you can control the strength if you want to bring the strength down and you can control the distance at which the uh, shadows are cast as well. From a concept standpoint, the low altitude clouds are basically made up of a weather map as well as um, uh, sort of two sets of 3D textures. So the first 3D texture erodes out the overall shape of the clouds. The second one adds more detail to it. So the first one is here, this base clouds, and I've included a variety of different types of 3D noise that you can use. 
And then the cloud detail includes the same different types. And this one's typically you would include this at a, at a higher scale, um, at a higher frequency. And then you also can distort them using this curl texture. You can use whatever curl texture you'd like uh, in your project. Um, and you can also adjust the density curve. So as you can see here, when you're adjusting the density curve, it's by height. So as you go from zero to one here, that's by altitude in the cloud layer. And um, when it is higher on the y-axis, it is increasing the cloud density at that point um, in the cloud layer. You can control the cloudiness, the cloud density influence. So the cloud density influence when set to one basically means when the cloudiness is zero, then the uh, extinction coefficient will also be close to zero. And the height density influence, which means that will fade out the density of the cloud as it gets lower in the cloud volume. Um, we also have distant coverage. So basically this, this allows you to adjust the cloudiness um, of distant cloud sections different than nearby cloud sections. So as you can see here, I'm adjusting it for the distant regions, but it's not affecting the local regions. Now um, we'll look at high altitude clouds. This one's pretty simple. It just consists of a weather map texture and two cloud textures that are um, sort of warped and included and uh, an extinction coefficient. So normally you'd want something quite low for the setting. Um, don't want it to be too high, so let's say something like two um, looks quite nice. Okay. And um, then we're going to take a quick look at the sky object system. So for sky objects, oh yeah, just one last thing. So you can also um, go up into the atmosphere. So if we press three here and then go up here and then enable the clouds, you can see that you can come up into the clouds um, and look down uh, from above the clouds. You can fly through the clouds. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's really good for like flying games, anything like that, where you really want to have those big, fluffy, um, three-dimensional thick clouds in the sky. Uh, so now we're going to take a quick look at this editor. So we have um, basically this editor is designed to help you understand the state of your um, sky configuration. So here we have a sun and a moon. Um, each sky, these are called sky objects. Each sky object has a set of properties and you can have only one um, sun sky object in your game scene at a time. Um, so uh, you can define the identity. So it can either be a sun or something else. You can define the angular diameter in degrees. So how big is it in the sky? Uh, let me see if I can show you here. I'm going to turn off um, the clouds and then we'll just take a look at the sky you can see that from our position it's oriented directly where the Sun is so that'll help you kind of orient and figure out where is uh, the Sun in your scene and you can adjust the size as you'd like you can see towards the edge um, it's getting darker it's because we're using physically based limb darkening algorithms to darken the edges of the Sun um, a physically based value is 0.53, um, but you can, you know, obviously use whatever you want. You can also add in a texture and you can tint the color of the object as well. Um, I recommend using the automatic color and brightness settings, um, but uh, you don't have to, you can set them yourself. Um, if you're using the automatic color and brightness settings, then the peak intensity will be assigned to the light child of the object um, when it's at the directly over, overhead. Um, and you can also set a lighting color mask. In addition, you can set the sort order. So how far away is it from the center? For example, if it's closer than the moon, then the moon will be occluded by the sun. Whereas if it's further than the moon, the sun will be occluded by the moon when it's passing behind it. So that'll help with realism. You can control the orbit offset. So, um, you know, where is it positioned along the length of its orbit? Uh, for the sun, you would normally want something like zero because that coincides with having the sun directly overhead at 12 o'clock, um, but you may want something different. And then you can also control the inclination, which is the angle offset of the sun relative to um, being directly overhead. So you can kind of think of it like if the sun's directly overhead and the inclination is 45 degrees, then the sun will be at an angle of 45 degrees instead of directly overhead. 
something like 23.5 is a nice value to have. You can also make it static so that it'll always be in a fixed position and then you can position it yourself directly. And last thing is that you can control the fall off with respect to the sky. Um, and you can also control that the handle color. And you can do this for the moon as well. So let's take a look at the moon. There's the moon. And you can see this one does have a texture on it. And we've made it artificially big. You can make it super big. Um, but just make sure you're using quite a high resolution texture. I'm not in this case. Um, but a realistic setting for the moon is actually surprisingly about 0.53 as well. Uh, but you can hardly see it, so I like to make it quite big for my scenes. And you can also tint the color. If you'd like it to be a li little bit blue tinted, something like that, you can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, if you'd like to add a new sky object, you just right click in your hierarchy and click Altos Sky Object, and you'll just automatically add a new one. So let's see where this one was added. It was just over there. So we're going to bring the orbit offset over. And now you can see it up here in the sky. So we might make that a little bigger. Um, and now you can see that there's these two moons. Um, and if we bring that angle over and then you kind of change the time of day, you can see that they're moving together. Okay, um, so I think that's a pretty general sort of high level overview about Altos, um, what it could do, what features it has. Uh, if you ever do accidentally, you know, delete this whole thing, no problem. Just right click, click Altos, Sky Director. It'll set you up with, you know, a new Sky Director, bring in a Sky Definition, Atmosphere Definition, Star Definition, all that stuff, and set up a new Sun and Moon object kind of positioned in, in a way that you might expect. Um, with the sun corresponding to being directly up at 12 noon. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that you uh, do like Altos. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help. Uh, you can reach me on email or in the Discord. And uh, we have uh, a bunch of FAQs on our website as well. So um, definitely check those out. Thanks for watching.